Welcome to NIOS students. Today uh, we shall be studying biology and uh, we shall be focusing on shoot system. Shoot system basically what is shoot system is it is the uh, aerial and the erect part of the plant body which grows upwards and it is usually above the soil and uh, it develops from the uh, plumule part of the embryo. If you remember that every seed has an embryo in it and the plant develops from the embryo. So the plumule part of the embryo develops into the shoot system and the radical part of the embryo develops into uh, root system. So uh, what is a shoot sy system? It is the uh, uh, stem, branches, leaves, flowers, fruits and seeds and uh, today uh, in this uh, discussion uh, we shall study about the structure, types, modifications and functions of the stem and also functions of leaf, flower and fruits. Uh, students you will see that there is a lot of variety of structures of all these parts of the aerial plant. And uh, all these variety of structures are as actually associated with the variety of functions they perform. perform. So there is, a simil there is a direct linkage between the kind of structure and the kind of function it performs. So we shall be uh, studying about stem first and uh, uh, let us see the qualities of the stem. Uh, it is positively phototropic. Phototropic means uh, it uh, likes light, it tr uh, tries to grow towards light and negatively geotropic. Geotropic means where there is gravitational pull. So roots will go towards the gravitational pull but stem will go away from the uh, gravitational pull. So stem is called negatively geotropic. All right. So the stem is divided into nodes and internodes. I would like to show you uh, your very familiar plant of neem and from this neem if you focus on its stem part you can see that uh, there is a place called node, these are nodes, this is the node from where the leaf grows out, right? So nodes are the places from which side branches, flowers or leaves they grow out and between the two nodes, can you see this branch here? So focus on this, this is one node from where I have plugged out the leaf. And this is another node and the space, space between these two nodes is called internode. So the stem is, now you can see that the stem is divided very clearly into nodes and internodes, alright. But root doesn't divide like this in nodes and internode. So these nodes only bear branches flowers. Now look at this. This is the node from where this branch has come out. All right. And this is the node where another bud you can see. This bud is bearing future flowers and also the flower, the inflorescence, the these are the buds right now and they will actually eventually in due course of time will develop into flowers. So this is how stem, bears, leaves, nodes, internodes, side branches and flowers. Alright, so we have to understand that this is how stem, these are the functions that stem, stem performs. Uh, now there are vegetative uh, buds which can be terminal or apex, apical in their position. Can you see that? I hope you can see now 
this is the side branch and this is the axillary bud. Can you see this axillary bud? Yes. So, this is the axillary bud and these are the terminal, they are on the apex of the stem. All right. So, this is the side branch. If you see, this is the side branch. Okay. And on the tip of the side branch is the apical bud, which is in this case a floral bud and it will bear fruits in due course of time. So, uh, these are the functions of the stem. Now, let us distinguish between stem and the root. So, uh, stems they develop from plumule and roots they develop from radical. Young stem, stem is green because of the chlorophyll and non-green uh, are the roots because of the uh, no chlorophyll is present in the cells of the root. Now, uh, the stem is divided into nodes and internodes and um, the root is not divided into nodes and internodes and the stem bears uh, leaves, vegetative and floral buds and uh, root does not bear such structures and then uh, stem bears, uh, there is no uh, stem cap but root since it has to grow out of sand particles or the soil particles and there is a lot of friction. So, the delicate uh, tissue of the growth of the root tip needs a root cap for protection. So, that is the structure root cap and the function is protection, but stem needs no this kind of cap. Then uh, positively phototropic, uh, it turns towards light, it is negatively geotropic, stem is negatively geotropic because it grows away from the pull of the gravity. Then uh, roots uh, are uh, negatively phototropic, but they are positively geotropic. That means the roots turn towards the gravitational pull. So now origin of the lateral branches is exogenous and it origins from the outer layers of the endodermis, whereas origin of the lateral branches or roots they uh, develop endogenously, that means from the inner layers inside the pericycle. So, these are the uh, names of the internal structure of root and stem from where the roots, uh, literal branches develop. And you will be more clear about it when we will show you the detailed diagrams of the in, uh, inner structure of root and shoot. All right. So, now let us talk about the uh, shoot apex. Shoot apex is the terminal dome shaped part of the shoot. It is formed of meris meristem called the apical shoot meristem and it is responsible for the development and the differentiation of primary permanent tissue. And mainly it causes the growth in length. It is divided into two regions as you can see in the diagram. The upper outer layer is called tunica, tunica means the covering, the protection and the corpus which is the uh, fast dividing tissue in below the tunica, alright. So, this corpus is responsible for the future uh, growth of the shoot and also for forming uh, various uh, other structures of the stem. So, uh, tunica as I told you, it is the covering the outer zone of the shoot apex 1 to 3 layers in thickness and it gives rise to epidermis which is responsible for the surface growth. Suppose this is the stem, now the shoot tip here gives the outer covering which is epidermis and it gives the protection uh, to the uh, whole shoot, all right. So, and the corpus, which is uh, the body inside, uh, the inner layer, uh, multi layered zones of corpus actually divide in all directions and they finally give rise to procambium. Now, try to understand the word procambium. Cambium means the conductive tissue, and pro means. Uh, preceding it. So, uh, the future 
uh, vascular tissue is formed from procambium. So, it forms the vascular tissue, by vascular tissue I mean the xylem and the phloem which do the conduction of water, mineral salts and food which is formed in the leaves and uh, the ground meristem which forms the ground tissue which is main uh, girth of the stem and these cells uh, also form the leaf primordia uh, means leaf primordia means a newly developing leaf. Uh, I have already shown you in that uh, example, uh, see it one more time. So, if you can see this, these are the future small baby leaves and before this these are the inside leaf primordia. So, these are the tissues which develop into future leaves alright. So, uh, this is how uh, various tissues of the stem apex they contribute in making future body parts of the stem. So, uh, the types of stems now we will discuss is that the stem can be aerial mean, means which is erect, rigid, strong and goes upright for example in some trees, herbs, shrubs and sub aerial which is weak and it grows parallel on the ground. For example, you must have seen money plant or grass which grows on the ground. They can't stand, grass cannot stand erect because it has a weak stem and uh, some money plant kind of plants which can climb up on the walls. So, uh, the underground part of the stem sometimes is uh, buried in the soil and it produces aerial branches at various nodes during the favorable conditions. When the conditions are not favorable, the stem will go underground just to save uh, that uh, harsh weather and uh, when the weather is uh, favorable, then the uh, nodes will produce aerial branches. So, this is how stem uh, perinates or saves itself from the harshness of the weather. Now, what you are seeing is these are the uh, stems which are generally weak, they cannot uh, stand erect and they spread on the ground or they hang downwards. Then uh, now let us see some of the modifications of the stem. The stems are variously modified into uh, underground, sub aerial and aerial stems for performing functions like manufacturing and storing of food. Uh, what is main function of the stem? Basically stem has to display the leaves in such a manner so that they gather uh, sunlight sufficiently to perform the function of photosynthesis. So uh, and also perination, uh, storage of food. So, there are many multiple functions that a stem performs. So, providing mechanical support. Now see, if you see in the neem tree, you must have seen that the uh, neem trees are very strong and they live for uh, years and years together and the stem if you see, they develop from a very delicate stem, thin uh, stem and over the years it goes on growing, growing, growing and becomes very thick and strong kind of uh, stem. And uh, this is how it provides mechanical support to uh, the leaves so that they are spread nicely in the sunlight and photosynthesis can be performed. So, uh, we shall now try to see the type of stem and the kind of modifications they have. So, underground stem is of uh, four types, rhizomes, comb, bulb and tubers and uh, sub aerial stems are runner, stolen, offset and suckers. Sub aerial means at times they are in the air, at times they go underground and aerial which is completely in the air. Now, I hope you understand all these three categories. Uh, underground is the one which stays below the soil. Sub aerial is the one which sometimes it is in air, sometimes it goes under the soil and aerial is the one which stays in the air. So, they can be tendrils, thorns, philoclads and uh, cladodes. So, I will show you pictures of certain uh, modifications 
in the coming uh, few minutes. The underground modification, uh, modified stem, since underground they may seem like roots but uh, you can very well recognize them. Uh, what is the main feature of the stem? It has nodes and internodes. So even if it goes under the soil, it will maintain its primary structure of having nodes and internodes. So non uh, scaly and non green leaves and the buds. Uh, now I will show you one example and you are quite familiar with this. Uh, can you make out what is this? Yes. So this is the ginger or called adrak. Huh? And uh, can you see the fine lines on this? I hope you can see these brown lines. These are the presence of nodes and the in between space is the internode and these brownie, can you see these? These are the brownie scale leaves, right? Can you see this? So these are the leaves but they are scaly and brown, can you see this? Yes? And this is the bud from here the branch is going to develop. So even ginger plant, it gives its leaves in the air, but it goes underground and develops, uh, stores food for the plant. So why it is thick? Because it is storing lot of food in it. But you can very well make out that the nodes and internodes are present there, scaly non-green leaves are present there and there are certain buds as well. What are the buds doing here? They help the underground stem to grow further, alright? So can you see some more buds here? Yes? Can you see here? Yes, this is another bud. So this is how uh, uh, this uh, kind of underground stem helps the plant in further growing and also in the function of storage of food, all right? Uh, students, so I have one more example of stem modification and here you can see that this is the potato, you are quite familiar with this. Uh, everybody eats potatoes at home and uh, this is a modified stem. It acts as a perinating structure by remaining leafless and dormant in winters. Uh, but giving off aerial shoots in the favorable conditions. If you remember, uh, when the weather is bad and harsh for the stem, it goes underground and uh, takes its own time, stores food, gets thick like this and uh, in the favorable condition. Uh, let us, uh, let me show you. Yes, can you, can you focus here? Can you see? Yes, these are called eyes. These are actually the future buds of the uh, plant on the stem. And from here, you must have seen some small tiny plants, they come out even when they are kept at home. At times you see that certain eyes of the potatoes, they grow out. So this is how, these are the future buds which will give out uh, aerial shoots in the favorable conditions and it has become thick and fleshy because it stores food inside it. You must have seen the potato inside. What do you see here? What is this? This is the starch which is the stored food. All right. So this is how it has become thick and fleshy and this is the food to be used by those buds in future when they grow up they use this starch or food and as such we eat them as vegetables at home. Alright, so now can you see these brownie scaly leaves coming out of this plant? Yes, these are the scaly brown leaves on the stem. Can you see this? Yes, so this confirms that this is the modified shoot. All right, so now we shall focus uh, 
on certain other modifications. Uh, I had shown you ginger and the scaly leaves and the nodes and internodes on it. Then uh, I have another example of com. Com you must have seen uh, at many vegetable shops, uh, which is also called uh, um, uh, chukundar, no, not chukundar, uh, like uh, uh, sorry, onion. So onion is another modified stem. Uh, the portion below it. These are the roots and this thick portion is scaly leaf base. Stem in this case has become a disc like, very small disc like. I will cut it to show you where the stem is, alright. So I am cutting it vertically, you must have cut this kind of uh, onion at home as well and try to cut and see what portion I am trying to show you. Can you see this now? This is the stem from where I think it is visible now. This is the disc like stem from various leaf bases are coming out and in the middle there is the bud. Bud is the one which is responsible for future growth of the plant. All right. So, I would like to show you certain more structures. These are the scaly leaves, scaly leaves. Can you see the difference between scaly leaves and the fleshy leaves? These are thick. All right. We use these thick leaves of the onion as food and these scaly leaves generally they are for the protection, they do not store foods, alright. So this is how uh, now you understand certain uh, stem modifications uh, and uh, now we will proceed further. Uh, there are certain uh, modifications of uh, sub aerial stems. For example, runner I talked about it is present in grass, uh, stolen which is present in uh, mint or pudina. So, and then offset which is present in water hyacinth or jalkumbi if you uh, have seen that there are certain purple or mauve colored flowers growing in the a river or pond side and the slow growing streams. So, the stem in that case is a offset weak stems and they just float with the help of certain uh, blown out uh, stem modifications. So, uh, suckers are uh, of chrysanthemum and underground runners which grow horizontally for a distance under the soil and then emerge Oblique, obliquely up and they strike roots and they form daughter plants. So, uh, this is a modified stem. You must have seen cacti, right? Here the stem has become green in itself and it uh, gathers chlorophyll and becomes photosynthetic and the leaves on top of it, if we focus on this picture further, can we focus and see the leaves and the thorns present on this? You must have experienced and seen some cactus plants and you know the thorns. So, these are the stem modifications. Thorns are the stem modifications and even the stem itself has become photosynthetic. So, this is how it performs the function. And now, uh, there are certain other uh, modifications called stem tendrils, thorns, phylloclades and cladodes. They help uh, the plant in climbing up stem tendrils, you must have seen some uh, thin ten, uh, rope kind of structures which uh, gather uh, the support around them and they uh, wind up themselves on certain wires or on the supporting trees and they help the plant strand erect and let the leaves perform the function of photosynthesis. All right, so thorns are the uh, protective organs which uh, uh, generally save the plant from grazing elements. 
for example in case of citrus plants you must have seen that there are a lot of thorns then phylloclades i showed you the picture just now and uh, uh, phylloclade or the cladode is the plant with limited growth and only one or two internodes they help in photosynthesis for example in case of asparagus so uh, well uh, now let's talk about the functions of the stem primary function is support and orienting the leaves in a manner so that they can be exposed to the maximum sunlight and for efficient gaseous exchange during the photosynthesis and the respiration so conducting water and minerals with the help of uh, tissue inside the uh, stem i would like to show you uh, a stem which i have cut in a transverse manner can can you see inside this tissue can you see this this is the peripheral tissue and this is the pith inside and this tissue carries xylem and phloem and they conduct water and minerals from root till the shoot all right so this is how stem performs all these functions it bears flowers and fruits as well and um, storage is the secondary function perination means tiding over the bad unfavorable growing period for example ginger and some many other plants uh, vegetative propagation means uh, stem itself can give a new plant for example in case of rose if you remember we cut a column of rose and put it in the soil and uh, plant it and so are the sugar canes we take small internodes of the sugar cane put them in the soil and the uh, buds present on the node they can become the future plant uh, so stem also performs photosynthesis i have already shown you uh, and uh, protection in the form of thorns then climbing up when the stem is weak it cannot stand on its own then uh, the modifications on the stem in the form of tendrils or hooks they help the plant to grow up uh, then uh, we shall uh, talk about uh, other modifications and uh, some anatomical structures of the stem in the subsequent uh, lecture so students today you have uh, studied about the aerial part of the plant which is stem and the various structures that stem bears and how the structure and the function of the plant are related and certain modifications of the stem which help the plant in performing various other functions so with this we uh, conclude today's uh, uh, stem topic thank you so much